Hello everybody, this is Nick Gersio over here from Geopath, and welcome to Out of Home Office Hours. Um, today I am joined by Scott Piachetti, our uh, SVP of Development Strategy, and Darren Maven, our SVP of Insights and Innovation. Hello. Hello. And today um, they're going to be talking to us a little bit about uh, Operation War. We're going to be getting a, an update of that. Um, before I pass it over to Scott, um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, just so you know, we are recording this webinar, so please contact me at um, nick at geopath.org to get the access to a YouTube uh, link of this. And also, we should have some time for some questions, so please just enter that in, a, in the questions box in your go-to webinar um, panel there, um, and we will try to get to some of those. Uh, but that's really all you should know. So um, I'm going to pass it over to Scott now. Um, to uh, once again give us a quick update on Operation More. Great, thank you, Nick. So um, b before we actually jump into the the look at Operation More, I do want to talk a little bit about some of our big news, which hopefully a lot of you know was our um, recent rebranding to Geopath on September 19th. And part of the reason why I bring that up is that um, it is really tied to what we're doing with Operation More very significantly. The the, the rebrand to Geopath was to really signal uh, a focus and a strategic change from not just measuring um, inventory, but to measuring audience location, which is really a lot what uh, Operation More is about. And it really is reflective of the, the granularity of data available that we have today that we never had before. And we were truly wanted to, to reflect that with the name Geopath. And even um, you'll see it's reflected in our, just quickly talk about our positioning statement of, you know, wanting to power smarter out of a marketplace through state of the audience location. And that is really, um, in my mind, uh, really what Operation More, More is about. And also um, talking about um, insights and market research available. I want to take, I know Nick, I think two weeks ago, gave a, um, uh, a webinar on the website itself, but I also want to take a moment for those of you that, that couldn't attend and just give a very, very quick walkthrough of, of the current website um, because we're really proud of it, but also there's some nice features here that I want to, want to really show everybody. So um, we do have, you know, obviously our, our some of our uh, features that we've always had in terms of our uh, location, market locator, um, but also want to show that we have our blog postings where, where this is a great place to find out things about thought leadership or constantly wanting to post and be um, be that, that, that partner for everyone, for all of our members uh, to provide insights on what's going on in the industry as well as insights on data. Um, and Geek Out Library is an area for, for all of our members to, to come in and get just download quick little short research vignettes. So these are on a number of topics including politics which is obviously very relevant these days, state lotteries, uh, and millennials attitudes towards travel, etc. So currently there's about uh, 30 or so different little short uh, research vignettes here. Um, five pages give you information on uh, different statistics that you can hopefully use for whatever you're doing, responding to an RFP, putting in pitches, or just general knowledge on the category. Um, but we want to make this available. And, and also, too, as you look through this and explore, um, if there are different topics or different areas that you think you want us to provide information on, let us know, because we want to make this fresh and we want to keep expanding this particular area of our site and make this valuable for all of our members. So I just wanted to, to pause a little bit on that and uh, take a moment in today's webinar to, to just give a quick overview of the website. And like I said, I know Nick did that a little bit ago. But I do want to hand it off to uh, Dylan, and he's going to really talk, give a quick overview on Operation More and give us some some insight into that. Cool. Thanks, Scott. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we've been very excited and working very diligently over here on Operation More, as uh, again, some of you may know from previous uh, communications from us, um, past webinars, we've been uh, evaluating and putting together a, a new process to provide a significant enhancements to the base metrics that Geopath provides to its members. 
all in alignment with what uh, Scott was saying about our position of, of providing insights on locations uh, as opposed to just you know inventory and such and it it really fits uh, well with the uh, diversifying landscape of out of home media and just media in general location is a component that almost every single decision that is being made today uh, that location is relevant so at the core of everything that we're doing in this up upgrade uh, is still the you know foundational traffic information but how that fits into um, the entire um, contextual movement of audiences at large uh, is really uh, driven by our capability of leveraging mobile location data uh, in a, a significant uh, way. Um, with the location data partners that we are working with right now, we have access to um, about uh, one out of every three devices in the entire United States which provides a very, very detailed picture down to a, a level of geography uh, that has never been possible before until recent advents in technology uh, and distribution of data. So with all that movement of mobile devices and the demographics of those home locations and the land use and um, you know, the daytime populations and everything, all that is taken into consideration to create one holistic view of the entire population. No longer are we going to be looking at one roadway in isolation. It's, it's truly how does the audience movement and volume in one particular location and the composition of those audiences uh, uh, work with the, the surrounding areas for the entire country coast to coast. So in this product that we are proposing to build with Operation More, uh, we will have metrics for uh, the entire population for every single roadway uh, for varying hours of the day days of the week uh, throughout the entire year. Um, and that is a, a significant uh, product that's being put together so that will be distributed again through uh, only technologies that have been created within the past couple of years to facilitate this, this uh, endeavor. So all very excited about that. Now at the core of everything is this uh, location data. You know, Location data coming from all these lovely devices that all of us carry with us 24 hours a day. Um, you know that raw signal information is being uh, anonymized uh, behind carrier firewalls. Um, and then those trip patterns uh, of those unique devices can, can uh, you know, reflect some pretty fantastic information uh, that's very relevant to understanding the, the audience at large. Uh, we know what the um, you know, density of devices in various locations are. We know some of the, the home locations from those patterns. We know the places of work. We know the other points of interest that those devices can visit over time. And with that, um, aggregating those, those, those trips um, over time, uh, you can create a very, very clear picture that's relevant down to our, uh, our audience roadways um, while still protecting privacy uh, at the same time. So this is something that we wanted to make sure that we were uh, cognizant of as we uh, put this proposal together to overhaul our measurement system, to be able to provide the level of detail that we need to be competitive in the media landscape while still protecting privacy but leveraging location data to its fullest extent. So at the end of uh, all of this, what we are going to have available for all Geopath members is this precise audience delivery information. That includes pred predictive and historical information so you can plan, but you can also learn from uh, you know, after the campaign has wrapped up, looking at the audience delivery beforehand or the, the movements of audiences on the roadways before, during, and after the campaign, tie those movement back to some sort of campaign metric, um, looking at audience delivery by time of day, day of week, with all these seasonal variations. Uh, the information that we'll have about those audiences are go, going way beyond what we currently provide today, which are, you know, base core demographic information of age, gender, uh, ethnicity and household income, getting into some really interesting consumer uh, profiles and getting into some behavior, attitudinal stuff, looking at audience segmentations, taking uh, you know, consumer surveys into uh, the fold. It's a, a very, very useful resource that all of our members are going to be able to tap into. And like I said just a second ago, pulling all this together into a post-campaign world, you can look at the audience delivery at different times a day for a particular audience segment 
where those uh, audiences reside, tying back in the sales or the social media engagement uh, or the tune-in, uh, back at those home locations, really closing the loop of how out of home fits in with the larger media uh, plan. So a, a much more useful product than what has ever been available for an out of home. And it will be available for all media, coast to coast. This is being processed for every single roadway in the entire country for both vehicular and pedestrian audiences. Uh, also being applied to transit environments, uh, transit routes, etc. But it also will open up the doors for new formats to be uh, included in the future into the Geopath family, which is a, a very exciting um, idea as more media types that are being measured by uh, Geopath just creates a, a, a stronger uh, utility of that core metrics for the agencies and advertisers and media owners. And this data resource, as you can imagine, every roadway, every hour throughout the entire year, uh, that is a lot of information. And to be able to provide that with uh, the, the utmost urgency to all of our uh, members and all of the software uh, systems that they use, this can only be uh, done through a distributed web services so people can tap into those data sets and all of the buying and planning platforms are all looking at the same resources simultaneously. This is great for media companies um, that are you know, building new inventory so that those pieces of inventory uh, are into the system as quickly as possible. And as soon as they're in the system, all, all parties see that at the same time. So a very, very uh, capable system, um, well beyond what we're doing today, but still providing the same type of metrics. We're still talking about audience impressions, uh, reach and frequency for a particular target within a particular uh, market definition. So uh, very compatible with the language we've been using, but much more capable for new uses in the future. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into some of the um, actual proof of concept work that we've done. Uh, this first example was showing uh, really the, the, the precision of an individual roadway that we can drill down into. This is uh, one corridor in uh, Chicago. This is I-294. Uh, in the future with this product, what we'll be able to provide is directional audience. So this is just looking at audience traveling northbound on this roadway. So there's a total of 82,137 individuals, not vehicles, but actual individuals traveling northbound on this roadway every day. You see it's just outside Chicago um, in close proximity to the Chicago O'Hare Airport. And because of the location information from the mobile devices that are being used in aggregate, we can understand a lot about where these audiences reside. We can look at that at a national level because there are no boundaries when you're summarizing that information. Uh, at that device level. So we can look at audience footprints coast to coast and you can see some regional patterns of that uh, interstate roadway, but also some visitors coming in or actually in fact probably re returning to the airport traveling northbound to Chicago here. A lot of the other you know, stories that can be told looking at the uh, downtown area. This would be a package of uh, transit shelters in the downtown Chicago area. Very different audience profile uh, a lot of tourists, a lot of business travelers visiting downtown Chicago. This would pick up those audiences coming from around the country. You see a, a familiar information about household income, but the uh, in-market versus out-of-market audience, very different from what we've seen in other areas. About 30% of the audience in the Chicago area actually coming from outside of Chicago. And this was uh, validated using other data sources through this evaluation process that we've been going through uh, over the past year. So uh, again, looking at the audience place of residence coast to coast, you're seeing national audience for just the downtown Chicago area, which is a pretty cool thing for national advertisers. But this isn't just for national advertisers. This is also for local, being able to have a precise audience metric that gets down to the census block group, being able to look at zip code audience delivery by hours of day, days of week. Um, you know, this is a footprint of the people that uh, are exposed to the downtown Chicago package, very different from something like that uh, interstate roadway um, where people are traveling or where, where people live that are traveling on this roadway. 
Now getting into some other capabilities that we've um, highlighted in this proof of concept. Now keep in mind the final product is going to look very different, but these are just some of the capabilities of what this data set can be used for. Um, you know, this is something that we are going to be providing not only to our members through our audience delivery system, but to all of our third-party processors, um, inventory management providers. Anybody that's accessing our data set today will have access to this information. So there's going to be a lot of really cool things that come out of here uh, for you know, new capabilities, new uh, ideas of how people are going to interrogate this information and create some, create some fun tools for all of us to use. Now, one of the things we can do here is, you know, pan around, you know, pretty, pretty basic stuff. We can see all the inventory just filtered here for uh, clear channel uh, bulletins, throw in fairway, Mahalo Marketing, Signal Outdoor, a couple of our members here in the Atlanta area. Um, but we can, you know, zoom in, isolate an individual piece of inventory, and see some information about the audiences on this piece of inventory. Now we see our 18 plus uh, audience delivery for weekly ratings. You have 364 impressions for this clear channel unit for a marketplace of 5.5 million in the Atlanta CBSA. So you get your familiar GRP's reach frequency. All very familiar information for anyone involved uh, or that currently is using uh, our out of home ratings. But what we're able to do because we have such a uh, precise understanding of where these audiences are coming from we can take that profile of those home locations uh, and aggregate that up at the individual road segment level and therefore for the audiences for each one of um, the uh, audited uh, verified media in our system. So we can look at the most common audience profile for this unit, which is this um, uh, Middleburg audience segment. We can pan out, we can see the geographies within the marketplace where these demographics are, are most predominant. And we see some of the inventory that over indexes for this target audience. So the Middleburg audience uh, makes up about 7.8% of the marketplace, but for this unique unit uh, makes up about 88.4% 8 of the audience. And so you can see the uh, target impressions, uh, target reach, target frequency as well. We get a, a very unique picture of this type of audience that can be used for strategizing and of how to put together a campaign. We see the familiar age distributions of this segment, uh, household income, net worth, what type of uh, occupations these individuals have, what type of consumer segments they spend their income on, housing information, et cetera. We can go back to other areas in the marketplace. We can uh, click on different units. Each unit's gonna have its own composition. Now getting into the Buckhead area uh, of Atlanta, North Atlanta, this is a pretty affluent area. You can click on some of these other tapestry segmentations. Um, Esri Tapestry Segmentation is a product that's de uh, developed by ESRI, um, one of the leaders in mapping technologies uh, in the world. Um, and that's going to be part of the base demographic uh, suite that we are providing to our members. Uh, licensing, the, licensing this uh, on behalf of our members with uh, Operation More. We'll click on the urban chic population, see where those neighborhoods are, where those individuals live, what units uh, over index for delivering for this particular audience. These are married couples, have college degrees, enjoy luxury imports. Some inf information on age distribution. These folks spend a lot of money on education, on uh, entertainment, on, on housing, uh, on social security pensions, investments. So you know, this kind of information can be used uh, in addition to many other uh, demographics uh, and consumer information that is all going to be included with the Esri demographic and tapestry uh, a product all in included in the, uh, the Geopath Insights. 
So we'll share some of these materials, make that available for people to explore online, see where we're going. If you have any questions on this, feel free to reach out to us. You can contact us at, at geekout um, at geopath.org collectively or individually. We do have a couple of questions. And uh, while we wait for Dylan to pull that up, I just want to remind everybody that you can ask questions simply by going to your um, go to webinar um, you know, a, a screen there, your, your box there, and, uh, and answering any questions in the uh, questions box so we can answer those. All right, this, um, this question is coming from the West Coast. Uh, does this new traffic data mean that you can track your audience travels via their cell phone? Specifically, if our billboard is located on a major trans transit between a large demographic uh, such as San Francisco and a major tourist recreational area such as Lake Tahoe, will the new data provide uh, more specific information about our traffic who drives by our billboard? Uh, absolutely. Uh, because the information that is coming is, is at the local level, uh, this is uh, nationwide data uh, that is being integrated into this. All of those trips, not just journeys to work, uh, not just journeys to the grocery store, people that are uh, taking vacations, things of that nature are all going to be reflected. So that composition of audience, you'll know uh, on roadways outside of uh, the home marketplace where those audiences are coming from. Um, and, and what hours of the day, what days of the week, uh, what months of the year they are visiting. So the seasonal variation that's going to be introduced is going to be uh, very, very uh, useful for anybody that's trying to uh, understand the, the seasonal variation of the audiences uh, and the tourist composition of those audiences. So someone uh, had a question about the specific screen that's up right now. Um, saying, do the, all the green shaded areas signify they pass the board, or is that just where they live? Uh, these are geographies. These are census block groups where this audience segment is the most predominant audience segment in those neighborhoods. So these uh, urban chic audiences live throughout the marketplace, but these are the core areas where they are most likely to be seen. Uh, and these boards over-index for these audiences at the market level. And the other question was talking about the development timeline for this. So we are currently uh, in an outreach process right now with our, with our membership to, uh, to share with everyone individually um, about the capabilities of, of uh, our enhanced audience insights development. And um, with that, we're going to be begin uh, development over the next 12 to 15 months, over the next, you know, Quarter, two quarters, we'll be sharing materials with our membership so we can start uh, the, the process of transitioning to uh, this level of detail. It's a, it's a significant education process that we're all going to have to work together on. So we'll be creating some case studies. We'll be um, uh, highlighting some use cases, uh, starting to share information about local activity patterns so people can start um, you know, wrapping their heads around what uh, variation and audience means to their, their business models, to, to the type of information that they can deliver, um, et cetera, to the end, end user. And also just to jump in quick, too, um, uh, one thing that, that Dylan mentioned is education. We realize education is, is going to be a key aspect of this and uh, creating awareness uh, among our members as well as the industry of what's going on and what we're doing and the power of the tool, but also as features roll out and functionality rolls out training all of our members on that and educating everyone on that. And so Kim, myself, Dylan, Nick, uh, Larry will all be out there educating all of our members and answering questions and doing whatever we can to make sure that this is a success and that it's implemented well. Any other questions? Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you so much.
much. Uh, once well, again, wait, for, I think another we question came in. Well, this system helped major companies such as Mercedes-Benz recognize that perhaps they can reach their upscale San Francisco audience in a rural location where that specific high-end out-of-market may advertise for less uh, money. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's lots of creative things you, that, that you, people will be able to um, utilize this data resource for identifying key opportunity times, places, uh, and segments uh, and, and geographies to, um, to, to deliver upon that, that core audience. Um, you know, we, we highlighted on that map a couple uh, audience segments, but there is also information about, you know, car ownership um, by geography of home location, and that can all be uh, delivered as well to uh, the individual road segment. So quite a bit of information that can be utilized for targeting purposes. And one last question about the timeline for rollout. Um, yeah, just to reiterate, the, the rollout of this, uh, the development timeline, it's going to be about you know, 12 months to 15 months, um, but throughout that period, uh, incremental utility is going to be shared with our members, um, sharing with you some of the information about hourly volume uh, fluctuations, uh, seasonal fluctuations, so you can start understanding uh, you know, what the prime time of your boards are, um, you know, which units are, are best suited for uh, AM versus PM audiences, uh, what months of the year are, are peak, which a lot of people are probably going to uh, intuitively know about their local uh, marketplaces, but you know, we'll be able to provide some very valuable empirically derived data to back up that knowledge. Uh, and then with some use cases um, throughout the year uh, and, uh, you know, yep. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and also we are available for, for, for anything you may need by, you may need by request. Um, obviously, uh, email us there at uh, geekout at geopath.org. Also, we'll go ahead and email either me or geekout um, for the video of today's webinar. Um, and until next time, thank you so much for joining us um, for out of home office hours. Thank you, everyone.